Good morning and welcome to morning prayer for a day when we commemorate a lot of people over a large chunk of time, five people, in two different time periods. The first are Paula and Eustochium of Rome, monastics and scholars. Paula, who was born in 347, was descended from Cornelia Africana, the mother of Gracchi. As Cornelia was the model of a Roman matron whose sons were only jewels, so Paula became the model of a desert mother um, whose wealth was surrendered to the service of God. Married at a young age, she had five children and was widowed at age 32. Though she had lived in patrician luxury, after being widowed, she was inspired by the example of Marcella um, and devoted her life to the worship of God, rigorous asceticism, and service to the needy. Both Marcella and Paula converted their palaces into monasteries and gathered to them many, wid uh, many widows and virgins. It says windows. I'm positive. It's widows. Many widows and virgins. In 382, Paula met Jerome, who had come to Rome at the invitation of Bishop Damasus and was residing in the home of Marcella. Paula and her daughter Eustochium, who was born in 386, um, took the irascible scholar and preacher of took to the irascible scholar and preacher of asceticism. They became Jerome's dearest companions and the only antidotes to his infamous wrath. The restraint they restrained his temper and frequently recalled him to the mildness and humility that Christ enjoins. While urged by her noble family to marry, Eustochium, under the guidance of Jerome, made a vow of perpetual virginity. Jerome's famous dis De Custodia Virginatus was written for her instruction. Fluent in Greek, Paula and Eustochium were ardent students of, script, of the scriptures, and they quickly mastered Hebrew under Jerome's tutelage. When he left to, the, to return to the east, Paula and Eustochium followed after him, making a pilgrimage of the Holy Land. The three of them settled in Bethlehem, and there Paula and had four monasteries erected one for men, over which Jerome presided, and three for women. In Bethlehem, their passion for the study of scripture only grew, and their challenging questions led Jerome to write many of his commentaries. Under Paula's persuasive and persistent influence, Jerome undertook a new Latin translation of the Bible from the original tongues, which came to be known as the Vulgate. Paula provided the books that were essential to Jerome's work, she and Eustochium suggested revisions to his tra uh, translation drafts and edited all his works, and the women of their convents were the scribes who made copies of the finished work available. Paula and Eustochium were Jerome's colleagues in this work, and without them there would be no Vulgate. Paula presided over the Bethlehem monasteries for 20 years, until her death in 404. In his eulogy, Jerome wrote, if all the members of my body were turned into tongues and all my joints were to utter human voices, I should be unable to say anything worthy of the holy and venerable Paula. After the death of her mother, Eustochium assumed direction of the monasteries. Eustochium died in 419 or 420, her eyes closed by her niece Paula, who took over direction of the monasteries after her death. So that's Paula and Eustochium of Rome. Then we have Richard Roll, Walter Hilton, and Marjorie Campbell. Mystics. Richard Roll, Wal Walter Hilton, and Marjorie Kemp or Kempe were three early and prominent figures associated with, the, with Christian mysticism in England. Richard Roll, born in 1290, was an English hermit about whose early life we know little. At the age of 18, he gave up his studies at Oxford for the ascetic life out of which grew a ministry of prayer, writing, and spiritual direction. Roll lived his final years near the Cistercian convent near Hampel, a village in South Yorkshire. Among his chief writings are several scriptural commentaries, some theological writings originally written in Latin and translated into English, and many poems. Though criticized by many for promoting a, a highly subjective form of religion, he was an ardent defender of the contemplative life he practiced. Similarly, though we know little of the early life of Walter Hilton,
beyond his birth in 1340. Evidence suggests he studied at Cambridge. Hilton spent time as a hermit before becoming an Augustinian canon at, at Thurgarton Priory in, North, in Nottinghamshire late in the 14th century. In his great work, The Scale of Perfection, he develops his understanding of the luminous darkness, which marks the transition between self-love and the love of God. Similarities between his work and the anonymous The Cloud of Unknowing have convinced some to attribute the latter work to him. Born around uh, or circa 1373, Margery Kempe, though illiterate, dedicated to a priest the book of Margery Kempe, dictated to a priest the book of Margery Kempe, from which we attain most of our knowledge of her. A mystic who experienced intense visions followed by a period of emotional disturbance, subsequent to which she went on a pilgrimage to Canterbury. She later made pilgrimages to the Holy Land and to Santiago de Compostela, and was encouraged in her efforts by Julian of Norwich. She describes these travels as well as her mystical experiences and her deep compassion for sinners. So three exemplar exemplars of English mysticism. Um, I find it interesting that the, the comment about um, Richard Rawl that he people um, one of the complaints against him was his his um, understanding of, of religion as being quite subjective and and to me and that's one of the one of the amazing things that came out of English mysticism is is a real understanding that our our experience and knowledge of God is very personal and different for every person. So um, the idea that we will all experience God identically through worship the same way, through the same prayers, through the same everything, is, is really just kind of ridiculous because we are so different. Um, we are created in immense diversity, so it makes sense that our experience of God would be just as diverse. And that's what he tried to explain, and, and that was one of the major complaints against him, because there was an understanding that everybody should understand God exactly the same. And there are those today that absolutely still feel that way, and feel that anybody that understands God differently is wrong. Um, so thank you, Richard Rawl, for that uh, example. Let us prepare for worship. Send out your light and your truth that they may lead me and bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. Psalm 101 I will sing of mercy and justice to you, O Lord, will I sing praises. I will strive to follow a blameless course. Oh, when will, when, when will you come to me? I will walk with sincerity of heart and with, within my house. I will set no worthless thing before my eyes. I hate the doers of evil deeds. They shall not remain with me. A crooked heart shall be far from me. I will, know, I will not know evil. 
Those who in secret slander their neighbors I will destroy. Those who have a haughty look and a proud heart I cannot abide. My eyes are upon the faithful in the land, that they may dwell with me, and only those who lead a blameless life shall be my servants. Those who act deceitfully shall not dwell in my house, and those who tell lies shall not continue in my sight. I will soon destroy all the wicked in the land, that I may root out all evildoers from the city of the Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 21, verses 15 to 26. After these days, we got ready and started to go up to Jerusalem. Some of, some of the disciples from Caesarea also came along and brought us to the house of Manasseh of Cyprus, an early disciple, with whom we were to stay. When we arrived in Jerusalem, the brothers welcomed us warmly. The next day, Paul went with us to visit James, and all the elders were present. After greeting them, he, came, he related one by one the things that, had, that God had done among the Gentiles through the, his ministry. When they heard it, they praised God. Then they said to him, You see, brother, how many thousands of believers there are among the Jews, and they are all zealous for the law. They have been told about you that you teach all the Jews living among the Gentiles to forsake Moses, and that you tell them not to circumcise the chil their children or observe the customs. When the, when it, what then is to be done? They will certainly hear that you have come, so do what we tell you. We have four men who are under a vow. Join these men. Go through the rite of purification with them, and pay for the shaving of their heads. Thus all will know that there is nothing in what they have done, been told about you, but that you yourself observe and guard the law. But as for the Gentiles, who have become believers, what we have sent a letter with our judgment that they should be abstain from what has been sacrificed to idols, and from blood, and from what is strangled, and from fornication. Then Paul took the men, and on the next day, having purified himself, he entered the temple with them, make, making public the completion of the days of purification when the sacrifice would be made for each of them. Here ends the reading. I'm just looking at this to see if there's something specific that I want to pull out of it. Um, there's concern here um, that Paul is going to teach um, people of Jewish background that they can essentially let go of their Jewishness um, to follow Christ. So all of the all of the rules and all of the customs, and Paul is, um, has been trying to make it clear that that. Both Jews and Gentiles come to Jesus from their own context. And so what they're doing is they're adding the teachings of Christ, the good news, to their existing context. So Jews come as Jews and with all that that entails. Um, they are not released from all of their Jewish observances. Gentiles come as Gentiles. They don't have those observances as part of their culture. Both are adding 
Jesus and the good news to what they already have. Um, so, so how they follow Jesus in a religious sense, how they, how they can continue to worship God will, by definition, look different. So he's making it really clear that he is not telling the Jews that they can stop all of this. They're still Jews. And he's telling the Gentiles that in order to follow Jesus, they don't have to become Jews. So it, it's an interesting point, and it, it really, right from the very get beginning, is showing that that not uh, the the way that people worship God and understand God will not all be the same. <laughs> there will be differences, and they may be major differences. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care, and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Paula and Eustochium of Rome. Compel us, O God, to attend diligently to your word, as your faithful, faithful servants, Paula and Eustochium, that by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, we may find it profitable for doctrine, for, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, and that thereby we may be made wise unto salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. And for Richard Rawl, Walter Hilton, and Marjorie Kempe. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the lives and works of Richard Rawl, Walter Hilton, and Marjorie Kempe, hermits and mystics, who, passing through the cloud of unknowing, beheld your glory. Help us, after their examples, to see you more clearly and love you more dearly. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity, and in all we do direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you, and you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. God bless you, and I will see you online tomorrow. This has been Morning Prayer from All Saints Church in Washington Courthouse, Ohio. Thank you for joining us.